Okay, it's Tuesday. I was gone on the weekend, went to Medicine Hat to visit family. So we were there Friday through Sunday. And yesterday I just tried to get some stuff done that was better to be done off camera. <laughs> well, I guess the first thing was order packing. I had 28 orders to do. And so that took me a while and I could have filmed it, but whatever, it was my no filming day. <laughs> and I also, what did I do? Looking at my list here. I did my digitizing homework for practicing the digitizing skills I learned at our last embroidery training session. So I was given a design to digitize, which I will show you. And I set up my imprint shop. Oh yeah, I finally set it up after like two years at least of wanting to do this. Or at least it feels like it's been that long. So I closed my Redbubble shop and I have the imprint shop instead. Main reasons just being like, I feel like Redbubble's trying to do too much and so their product quality is kind of hit or miss because they have too many things and it's really overwhelming keeping up with like having files at work for all of those different products. And it, I'm just going with imprint, it's more simple. They have fewer products and they give a better cut to artists. It's a very, very popular site for artists to sell prints on so they can handle bigger prints and just more prints because I'm not always gonna have everything available as a print. And so I've got a lot of stuff added there. I do wanna go through some of my older artwork and add some more, but it's got a decent amount for now because I'm not gonna have everything that's ever been a print. I kinda want it to just be the work I think is my best work. Now some of the stuff I uploaded is patterns, which doesn't work for much stuff, although it has to be a print by default. But I wanted them up there for phone cases because I thought it would work really well for that. And so some of the designs are really only available on a couple things, that's why. <laughs> but I'm just excited I finally did that. Although I probably have to set up some kind of like billing information too. Oop. Whatever. But I've got stuff up there. I made the banner, changed the profile picture, whatever. I did not get around to making more sound bites. Maybe I can get to that today because it streams tomorrow. So first things first, so let me show you what I digitized and let's stitch it out. I haven't stitched it out yet because I'm like, let's wait for the vlog. So this is the design I was told to do and just think through you know, what types of stitches go where and what order you wanna do them in. Like if you have two different colors that are not touching each other, you can make them touch each other just by doing a single walking stitch all the way over as long as it's underneath other stitches. So here's the one I did. The colors are different because we don't have those same colors here. We don't have any blues in fact and so <laughs> it's just uh, picking colors based on what we have. So if you have a shape for example this magenta shape here. <laughs> you have to trace out the shape but then you also mark where you want it to start and where you want it to end. So this green circle start, that red X is the end, and you can control the direction of the stitches as well. And so this is, uh, this is what we got. This is the 3D look at it. So for example, these black lines, I want to do the mountains and water lines before it does this line, because I want this one on top. And then you want the outer circle to be the very last black line. And you want to do it in such a way that it's traveling the shortest distances between sections and also avoiding a trim if you can. So it does all the black without lifting the needle and trimming the thread. In fact, I only have one trim within one color, which is the green, because technically you could do the green and just travel down to the other green. And then when you do the brown, do the same thing. But I feel like the green is supposed to be on top of the brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want the brown to look like it's sitting in front of the tree at all. So yeah, and even for these sunbeams, it'll do a column stitch and then it'll do a walking stitch all the way to the tip, and then it'll do a column down to the middle, and then it'll travel up. So it's doing the entire sun without a single trim. <laughs> and then for the water, I've got different directions of stitches. It alternates back and forth. So yeah, that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna try stitching it out with the machine, see how it goes. I'm gonna use this sweater because it's messed up. It was from one of our very first days of owning the machine. Christian was trying to do a golf guy, and he didn't feed the sleeve on correctly, and so it stitched through the base of the sweater too, and that's way too much to seam rip out. Like, look at that. <laughs> and so the sleeve of the sweater is attached to the main part, but I can use a different section of the sweater for this because this is just a little test anyway. So first I need to take off the cap driver. So you just loosen this screw on this side and there's one on the other side. And then I can put these back on, which are the regular arms for regular hoops. 
The machine comes with a bunch of these. I'll need the big one. Really just get it loosened a little bit and then you can use your hands. I showed this in action briefly in the last vlog. <laughs> I'm going to take this off too. It doesn't necessarily have to be off unless it's interfering with garments, but I'm taking it off. So first remove that front piece, slide it out, with it. Oh my god, the tearaway stabilizer leaves so much dust. But now that I've actually used some, I'm like, oh my god, this would be heavenly for the sweaters too. Because <laughs> we got some for the hats, and so now yeah, I kind of want that also for the sweater. <laughs> This whole process is why if we did hats, you would just do a bunch in bulk and then, then be done with it because you have to switch everything over. Kind of the same with the fast clamp. Like if I do use the fast clamp to add a logo to the side of a sweater, you don't want to do them all at once so you don't have to reconfigure the machine each time. That would also be an advantage of getting a second machine. Oh, also I just want to hit play here. You can actually watch an animation of how it's gonna stitch everything out. <laughs> Do I have too much overlap with the black? Maybe, I don't know. I'm a newbie, I don't know these things. I also don't know how it decides to go to like a certain point and then leave. It's probably just based on my entrance and exit point. I mean, it's what exits here. So it can start going on the mountains. So it'll do the first one in this direction, the second one gets done in this direction, then this one gets done in this direction, then it goes to the water, blah, blah, blah. You can see I switched up some of the colors too. <laughs> I just thought it'd make sense to go lightest to darkest. <laughs> well, if that's darkest. It looks darker on the spool compared to what it's showing me here. <laughs> some gray water, nice. The trees, the sun, so yeah, it'll travel out and go inwards. So no cuts required on those sunbeams. So those are column stitches, middles of fill. And then the outlines, cool. So that's what it's gonna do. And hopefully it looks good. What are you chewing on over here? Hey. No baby. Wow. So yeah, the design file says I have these colors. Now tell me which cones are those colors. And so I'm like, okay, the white thread is in position number one. That's basically what I'm telling the machine to do. The second color, which is pink, is in position number three, and so on and so forth. So that's what this means. So I've set that, and I've checked my presser foot since I've switched from hats to sweaters. I hooped the bottom of the sweater, and I didn't flip the design around to be right side up because this is an unwearable sweater anyway, so whatever. While that's stitching out, I'm going to do some cleaning because there's a lot of stuff sitting out, and you also have to get out. Sorry, Miss Geek. Sorry, baby. So all the clips you're about to see are real time. I have not sped this up. The machine is just that fast, except for one clip at the very end, and I've marked that it's sped up 10 times speed, and it's very obvious when it's suddenly 10 times faster. But this thing is just fast. Like, I had it set to be a max speed of 1,200 stitches per minute, and it can go up to 1,500. So this thing can go pretty fast. Uh, I have it set to 12, but it'll automatically slow down if it needs to, depending what kind of stitches it's doing or just, you know, the machine knows. The machine knows to adjust stuff on the fly. I just find it so fascinating to watch. It's like seeing a printer for the first time. You're staring at it being like, oh my God, how does it do that? It's just so fascinating to watch. I'm sure <laughs> that fascination will subside a bit over time, but I just love it. I just... I want to keep staring at it, but yeah, I am also just shocked that I digitized this. I did this myself. I thought it was going to take me forever to learn digitizing, and here we are. I mean, I only know the very, very basics, and I only know so far in a certain program, but I'm so proud of myself. It's so cool. I just feel like I have so much power, <laughs> but yes, this oh, right here, by the way, 
there's a thread break. I think it's because we used that thread color for the first time. It The thread technically didn't break. It came unthreaded from the needle. And so it's detected as a break because it can detect the tension is gone. And we actually had a big problem with that when we first got the machine. And it's kind of been mostly fixed. It's almost been entirely fixed, actually. Um, one of the things I did is I made the tail lengths of the thread longer. So when it trims the thread, it leaves a longer tail. And I also changed the inching stitch count from two to four because when it goes to start a new spot, it's stitching slowly for a few stitches and then it goes full speed. That's your inching stitch count. And so I made it inch for a longer amount of time so that it wouldn't pull the thread through. The only thing is the more inching stitches you have, the longer it's gonna take to do a design. And so it's in your best interest to have a smaller number. So maybe now that we have you know, we've used it more. Maybe I can try putting that number down to three, maybe even back to two. Maybe the long tails are enough to prevent it from doing that. But this magenta thread hasn't been used and had a short tail. And so sure enough, it got unthreaded. So I think the tail length has been a problem for us. Like for the machine, I think we need the long, the long tails for our machine because that's pretty much solved all our problems. <laughs> also, this design did do some cuts where it wasn't supposed to, like did some trims. So for example, the water was supposed to be done in its entirety without it trimming the thread. And it did the first two sections without trimming, but then it did sections three and four with trims. And so I don't know why, maybe just I didn't have the starting point of the walking stitch close enough to the ending point of the previous stitch. I don't know, just something to look into because if it detects there's a certain amount of gap between two different stitches, it'll do the trim. So maybe I just didn't have them close enough to each other. Also, it did a trim after the very first sunbeam, which it was not supposed to. So maybe just a similar issue there. I don't know. But then the rest it all did is one piece, except the very final bit, the middle of the sun, where it did the fill instead of columns. It did do a trim before that. And so was that a distance thing or was it because it was doing a different stitch type? I suspect it might be because a different stitch type, but I don't know. But... Yeah, it's stitched out. There's a little bit of white thread you can see poking up towards the back. That's because the bobbin ran out very soon into this. Like it ran for a few minutes and then the bobbin ran out while I was doing the white fill. And so there's just a bit of residual thread sticking up from that. So that just needs to be trimmed after. But other than that, everything went totally fine. I mean, the bobbin running out is not a problem. That's expected. Really, the only problem, in quotes, was the the needle coming unthreaded for that one color. But kind of saw that coming because like I said it's the first time we used that color but yes I used design shop to digitize this which is Melco software because there is a Melco OS program that runs the machine but then they also have their designing software and so I have a basic version of the of the design shop software that came with the machine it's not their fancy version but I have a copy of Wilcom which is kind of like the big boy embroidery software for digitizing designs. So I haven't even touched that yet. So all the digitizing I've learned so far has just been in Design Shop. And so once I switch to a new program, there might be a bit of a learning curve getting used to where the different tools are and maybe they work a little bit differently. I don't know. Like I've, I watched a lot of tutorials way back when, but I didn't really understand what I was watching and you kind of forget stuff. It's like once you actually start, you got to go back and rewatch and then the information really sinks in once you actually have some experience doing the things you're watching. So there's more to learn, but I'm still very proud of the fact that I I digitized this thing and it didn't even take that long. And a lot of the stuff's automated, like the way it does the stitches underneath your main stitches, it, it figures all that out on its own. And so it's a lot easier and simpler than I thought, at least so far, <laughs> at least so far. I'm sure there's more to learn, but yeah, it was just very exciting. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we have a sliver of white there. That might be bobbin. I could tweak designs maybe to have less overlap. Like, you can see some a bit of bubbling under this fill stitch here where the column is underneath it because I did want it to overlap but maybe I had it overlapping too far because you can see the bump especially right here look at it look at it look at the water because the water because it did the stitches in different directions which I remember seeing in the original video I watched about this <laughs> I uh 
I copied their technique and so look at that look how the water looks different color depending on the angle I guess mostly from this angle <laughs> but that's the same color used for all the water stitches but like how fun is that I never thought I'd be able to digitize an entire design so easily obviously it's about fine-tuning settings and whatnot but it took me like an hour to digitize it and it works I thought it was gonna be so overly complicated and scary because I mean there are a lot of fancy techniques you can get into based on what I've watched so far but that's that's pretty good pretty good pretty easy and there's the back of the design woo next up we're gonna open up some thread this was just delivered yesterday. So when I went to Canso to get some thread for my training session, I could only get two, but I had a minimum $100 order. And so I ordered other thread. Although this is the rayon, which is not really recommended for the Melco. They recommend the, the polyester threads over this stuff. So oops, but I could still use it. Maybe not for like big main designs, but just fun to have on hand and could possibly be used for the name signatures too. Like we did use my black thread during training and it worked fine. So I'm confident I could still use this stuff. So I just picked this on the spot from their color charts. I was just like, uh, I'll take this one and this one. <laughs> but I got some really cute colors. What the heck? These are cute. These are really similar. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, these are gorgeous. Oh, I didn't get any greens. Oh, maybe I cut them off the list or... It's possible I reduced at one point because I was over $100. <laughs> but there we go. I have blues now. Oh my, I should have opened up this yesterday. I could have stitched blue water on the design I just did. Even blue sky, really. This could have been the sky. This could have been the water. <laughs> but yeah, look at those. Why is this one like this? Is this somebody's return? So what I need to do is test my matte thread to see if it works well with the machine. And then I can bulk order it. But the thing is I have to get it from Madeira and they have still not resolved my issue. I feel like I'm being ghosted. I gave them two weeks to figure out the issue and then I followed up and then didn't hear back for an entire week. So yesterday I sent another follow up and we'll see if they respond. <laughs> Cause I want to order more thread, but not if I'm going to get screwed over again. Like I can try to go for a cheaper shipping option. It said that the one I chose was the cheapest UPS option, but maybe I can just go with a different courier. But like them marking the value of my package as a thousand dollars for the purpose of customs, like what was that about? What was that about? So I had to pay the 5% GST on that, which was $50. And I feel like that was not fair. In addition to my $141 shipping fee, which I don't think was accurate either. Ugh, so it's like, can you please respond to me? Because like, I need to place another order. But <laughs> I don't really want to if that's what's gonna happen again. But that's my only option for the matte thread is to order directly from them. Since Canso does not carry all the matte thread colors. <laughs> Midna is back to her old habit of being a little butt baby sitting behind my butt in the chair. <laughs> I was opening this because I want to work on recreating this traditionally this week, mostly tomorrow during my live stream. And so I wanted this printed out so I can trace over the edge, but I stepped away because it makes more sense to work on this while coats of paint are drying because I'm going to paint this little doggy that I got at Dollarama because it looks like my mom's dog. I mean, this is a Westie. My mom's dog is a Cairn Terrier and her last dog was also a Cairn Terrier. So I'm gonna paint it to look like a Cairn Terrier. I probably should put the clear cover on my table. Kiki, I'm gonna have to lift you. I feel like I should also change out of this sweater because I most definitely will get paint on it. 
We don't even have the AC on today. We have the heat on. Today has a high of nine degrees Celsius. That's 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Why? And I guess in Jasper, which is here in Alberta, although it's in the mountains, they just got a dumping of snow. And I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> tomorrow's supposed to be the first day of summer. It's freaking freezing. I'm using my extra monitor to monitor what I'm doing. Ha ha ha. So I started out by painting the doggy all black because that way we're filling in the cracks. This thing is very textured. There's lots of hills, lots of valleys. And so fill in the valleys with a dark color and then using a lighter color and less paint on the brush, gently brush on the peaks. And that way you have some nice definition with some lights and some shadows. Plus this doge, Sadie, she has pretty dark undercoat and she has parts of her that just are pretty much pure black. And so that's why I did it this way. And it's kind of also Maddie. Maddie passed away. Maddie was the first Karen we had. And so it's kind of both of them, you know? And they did look very similar where they started out paler, blonder when they were puppies and then they slowly got darker as they aged. So really can be both. Although I'm using pictures of Sadie as reference for this. It's still both, it can be both of them. And as for Ben, the Scottish Terrier we had at the same time as Maddie, this is not him. Well, right now it looks like him actually. <laughs> but um, you know, we've had a lot of Scotty stuff over the years. It's so easy to find Scotty merch. It's such a popular dog motif, but Karen's, it's a lot harder to come across Karen merch. So this Westie was the closest thing. A Westie's pretty much like a Karen Terrier, but white, so. <laughs> This worked out perfectly. Just had to give it some paint. So yeah, here I'm going on top with some of the brownish color. I mean, it's quite a light color because I figured in some areas where it's a little less opaque, a little less thick, it'll look like a darker color. And I did also have some brown too, but I mostly used this lighter color, mixed in with a smidge of brown. And then for the highlights, I used just that light color solo and a little bit of white on top for the highlightiest parts because some parts of her fur are white so yeah and then for the log I it looked really good actually I had to fill in some spots because it either wasn't fully painted or the white of the Westie was painted onto the log so I had to fix some areas and I ended up actually lightening the log because it was blending in too much with her fur because there's so much dark on the fur I lightened the log a little bit so you could see it better against the fur. Although her chest slash stomach area is kind of lighter. And so <laughs> I was trying to do it in between where it's darker than the belly, but lighter than the paws. Because her fur is darker on the legs and in the face and ears. And so that's why that part's that darker. She's kind of lighter around the middle. And then her tail's quite light too. And around the scruff of her neck, I noticed quite white and around her knees. Kind of depends on the picture. I swear every picture I've looked at, she looks a little bit different. But <laughs> I was trying my best to get a close of a match as possible. Okay, I just recorded that voiceover and then I was looking at the clips and I was like, wait a minute. I feel like we're missing something here. This dog's only half done right now. <laughs> and sure enough, I had some clips that I missed. So adding those in here. We're doing stuff like her little eyes. Her eyes look pretty much black, but I guess they're probably technically brown. So we're adding some brown in there. We're adding a little highlight. Her nose looks pretty much pure black, but again, we're adding some highlight. We're just trying to make it pop a little more because if it's a black nose on a black snoot, then you can't really see it that well. So we're trying to add some extra contrast. And I did the same thing with the pads of her paws on her little feetsies. And so it's actually turning out quite nice. I thought I was done this, but then two days later I went back and added more to it, which you will see coming up soon after a little bit of vlogging of other things. So I'm doing like a final reveal shot in a second here. This is not technically the final reveal. There is more to be done, but that's the reveal of what I had done thus far. That's how it was looking. And it's so cute. Oh my god, a little Karen Terrier. Oh, baby, so cute. Especially with the little black paws and black face. So cute. I'm filming this clip at the point where I'm here in the paint job. I'm just letting that dry before I continue. 
I've assembled the strawberry stuff so I've got it at the scale I want to do it and kind of you know copy and paste stuff and then fix it because I didn't want this strawberry overlapping so I've got a few different ones I deleted the spots from the pink ones just so I could see the spots better when I'm tracing this onto the mixed media paper because it is thick paper and from this I should be able to build pretty much anything and here's the printout that I can trace tomorrow so that's ready to go while that continues to dry I can start on some sound bites because I did the strawberries while the the black layer was drying and so while the brown layer dries sound bites for the stream <sighs> I wheeled over a different chair and it spooked Midna so she got out of mine you knew she got that other chair so you could stay in that one if you wanted to. Poor baby. Why, baby, why? Why, baby, why? Why, baby, why? Why, baby, why? I'm a little duck. I'm a, I'm a little ducky swimming in the water. I'm a little ducky swimming in the water. I am very tiny, far far in the distance. I'm a little ducky swimming in the water. Okay, it's now Thursday morning. The strawberry stream went well. I'm not done the strawberry art, so I'll finish it next Wednesday. I'll include a little bit of footage from that at the end of this vlog because we just had the speed painting doggo segment and so it's like do we need another speed paint segment right away no oh i don't have much else for you today i cut my bangs last night i need to make some tweaks this side looks longer but i don't know if it's because it's not curled like this side i plastered it flat to my forehead while it was drying to try to negate the cowlick that's always on this side <laughs> i'll know when i actually go to style them but that's why they're looking a little crazy right now because i don't think i will bother styling them today because I also painted my nails and I used regular nail polish for the first time in years and the reason I'm not doing gels is because I do want to do gels soon but not yet and so I don't want to do a set of gels if I'm gonna have to just take them off soon so and it looks like concrete and so I put this sparkly clear coat over it but the <laughs> my polish is so old if I did more than two swipes on a nail it would start to get all clumpy because it was drying and it was it's it, and this clear coat on top is supposed to be a light pink. It was yellow, but it doesn't look yellowy on the nails. It looks good, you know, it's, looks okay. I'm just scared I'm gonna chip it right away. <laughs> but, uh, oh hi, oh you wanna come up? Thank you. <laughs> she needs attention. Yeah, this looks way longer now. Oh my God, compared to this side. This side also has like the natural lift at the root, whereas this side does not. So it's kind of hard at times. Do you go based on flattened length or do you go based on like where it's sitting length? Well, aren't you cute? Aren't you cute? I just packaged about nine orders and I think I'm gonna now make a little bit of tweaks to the doggy. Oh, he's a little doggy friend. Cause my mom sent a snap of Sadie this morning and I was like, oh, there's some light spots on her face that I wanna add. Cause I had some photos of her that I was looking at, but some of them, the lighting was darker or what have you. This just shows a lot better. She's getting a little burger patty for her birthday. <clears throat> I did a light chin, but she also has a bit of a light mustache and it's kind of lighter on the sides of the mustache too. And by her brows and look at her front paws. The tips are light. I have a picture of her where her legs look entirely black. It's <laughs> She's a color shifting doggy. Hi baby. So I'm gonna make some tweaks, let that dry for a bit, and then I can do the top coat on it. And um, I gotta edit this vlog today too. Oh, and I wanna wrap my uh, niece's birthday present, so I'll do that as well, yes. So here's before the changes, and here's the after. We've got a bit more definition in the face. It's not just mostly black. And same with the paw tips. I added a little bit more white in some places too, especially along the back and the tail and on her knees. So, yeah. So for the top coat, I'm gonna use this. 
I know it says wood finish and I know it says interior, but I don't have any options here. It says it's non-yellowing and I've used it on non-wooden things. This entire metal thing is coated in this stuff. That's why I bought it in the first place. And considering this little dog will be hanging outside, why is it swaying? Okay, okay. Considering it's hanging outside, I'm kind of nervous about how it's gonna hold up. I mean, my mom could hang it inside if she wants to, but like it's a garden ornament. It's a yard ornament. And so I just, you know, I need something heavy duty. I don't wanna use like Mod Podge. And I'm not gonna go out and buy something. I'm just gonna use what I have. All right, little doggy. here goes nothing. So hard to not get bubbles because of the texture of the fur. It's agitating the bristles. Also, it's just kind of sinking into the cracks, so it's gonna be a little extra thick in the cracks. And now we wait. Little doggies hanging from the ring light. <laughs> I also put a bit of glue on the knots because it wasn't double knotted to begin with and I think it looks good single knotted so I just put glue. I thought we had purple frozen wrapping paper or did we use that all up? I mean I've got this. Maybe it was Christmas frozen wrapping paper so maybe it's all used up. I don't know. This'll do. So what I got for my niece is this dinosaur light up terrarium. Build and grow a beautiful miniature world. Learn all about botany. Has everything you need to grow real plants. Whoa. There are decorative figures, real rocks and fossils. Makes a great night light. Dinosaur backdrop included. I've already peeked in here since it wasn't sealed. <laughs> yeah, it just seems really fun. It's like a fun activity. So that's what it is. Why did I grab the smallest scissors ever? It does say age is six plus, but you know what? We're gonna ignore that. This is actually the first time we're making it to one of our niece's birthdays because we actually live close now. I think red looks best because there's no red on the top. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ta-da! Cute, cute, cute. And now for the final voiceover for this vlog. It's the third one I'm doing. What the heck? <laughs> it's footage from the Wednesday stream. Just a nice short condensed version for those of you who didn't see it or maybe those of you who did but still want to see the nicely edited recap. <laughs> uh, I feel like this past week and a half or so, I feel like I got a decent amount of stuff done, even though we were gone last weekend. Had a bit of a short week this week, but still feel like I got a decent amount done. And there's more stuff coming up too, like there's my niece's birthday. Um, then we have a couple friends of ours from Vancouver who are gonna come here to visit. They're just gonna stay one night as they're passing through. And then we are going to be going to Vancouver for a friend's wedding. And then right after that, Christian's parents are coming here to just visit and also help out with some stuff like Christian's dad's building a storage thing for our garage. And so they'll be here right after that. And then, I mean, I will go camping at some point with my family, but that will probably be August. And we've got another wedding, September. Really, it's mostly just like these next four weeks that are gonna be the most chaotic. It's so, we're gonna have a lot of short weeks and it's just, I don't know. I'll just have to try to get as much stuff done as I can. Cause with all this embroidery stuff, I feel like it's actually happening at a really bad time. But if it takes time, it takes time, you know? We don't have to rush it. I don't have to rush to get stuff out. I have to remind myself of that. Just take things one step at a time and It'll all work out in the end. I've got my master list that I made in the other vlog. I think it was the last one where I just listed out all the stuff that I want to get done in the near future, both business-wise and 
personal slash house stuff. And so that's helping too, being able to just pick stuff off the list. But um, yeah, I feel like I've been pretty productive this last week and a half, two weeks. Like, I mean, I've been productive in general, but I feel like a lot of my focus was on the embroidery stuff and I'm doing more other things now. But yes, about the strawberry ort. Um, well, what to say about it? Uh, I traced over the drawing pencil and some parts I just traced over in marker because I felt like that was easier, like the lines for the leaves. Although in the end, I end up covering those because the leaves were bothering me this whole time. I'm like, these leaves just don't look right. They look weird. And ultimately, I realized that having those light green lines in the leaves was just not the way to go about it. It works well for the embroidery design, but it doesn't work out for the traditional art design. So we're switching things up. Also, the light pink was a little too light. When it's the first thing on the page, it feels darker. But once you start coloring other stuff in, you're like, oh. Never mind, it's not. I also made the leaves on the pink strawberries lighter than the leaves on the green or the on the red strawberries, just so that it's not like super dark leaves on a light strawberry. I don't know. Just another thing I can change because when I'm doing the design for embroidery, I'm trying to limit the amount of colors I'm using. So just one dark green, one light green. But now I'm like, mm, doing this with Copic, I can do whatever I want. I can make it different. And overall, I want this to be a little darker and less saturated than it would normally be. Like this, the red strawberries are quite dark and the leaves are quite dark compared to strawberry leaves. So I'm kind of trying to go on the darker desaturated side of things. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I also am accepting, try, or trying to accept the fact that <laughs> the strawberry design is not gonna look the same across all products. Cause like the colors I'm going with for the sweaters is not going to be exactly the same colors that's being used on the sketchbooks because I don't even know the exact colors that are being used. I haven't actually seen the sketchbooks in person. Plus even just the cloth color I went with does not match the sweater cloth color. So I'm just ex trying to accept that everything's going to look different. It's not going to all match. So just go with what looks best for that particular item. And yeah, these strawberry designs can be scanned and then remove the background and they can be used for things like washi tape, notepads, what have you. I can make a pattern even. It's just kind of like with the winter buns, I made a bunch of elements, scan them, and then I can turn them into whatever I want. Same idea with the strawberries here. It can be turned into different things. So that's the purpose of this artwork. And I didn't get too far on this. I'm only about halfway done. I got all the marker down and then I started on the pencil, but I didn't get very far with the pencil. I only got down the pencil on the flowers and then I got started on the leaves, but I'm not even done the leaves and haven't even touched anything else with the pencil yet. So I'll do the rest of that in the next Wednesday stream, but I wanna add a bunch of different colors. Like these are white flowers, but you look closely. I got pinks in there. I got greens in there. I got oranges in there. We're making it more colorful and I wanna carry that across the other items as well. So yeah, for the leaves, I just realized I needed to cover those light lines. And so I covered over them with marker and then started going with some darker pencil and adding more colors. And I loved how it was looking. I feel like this first leaf maybe is not as good as the other leaves, even though they're not done yet. So we'll see, I might redo this lone leaf, but it was kind of the guinea pig, you know. <laughs> but I'm loving the switch. I think it looks so much better for the traditional art and it kind of makes more sense too. I mean, it's just looking at drawings of, or not drawings, but actual pictures of strawberry leaves. They kind of do have a light center if you look real closely, but mostly it just looks dark. So this is technically more accurate anyway. And so this is how it looks so far. Work in progress, not done yet. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next vlog. Or in the stream. <laughs>